All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Ben Ostermeyer. I am the technician for the Iris Center for the Digital Humanities at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville, uh, also referred to as SAUE. And today I'll be talking about one of the projects that I have helped to build through the Iris Center. And real quick, if you would like to follow along with the slides now or take a look at them later, um, you can visit this link, benostermeyer.com slash globaldh2020, uh, or I'll post it in the chat afterwards. And I also have the full text of my presentation in the uh, presenter notes if you want to follow along, refer to it later. In 2016, Bob Diber, the Regional Superintendent of Schools of Madison County, Illinois, noticed that no comprehensive histories of Madison County had been written since 1912. Diver reached out to three historians at the local Southern Illinois University Edwardsville about writing another county history book. These historians, Stephen Hansen, Jeffrey Manuel, and Jason Stacy, reviewed the previous county histories published in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and raised the problems of recreating one for the 21st century. Previous county histories were written as commercial enterprises, funded by the privileged and wealthy men of Madison County. In the 1873 history, citizens paid $75 to have a celebratory biography and portrait printed in the county history. The result were books that reinforced the social status of the men who funded their publication, typical of many local histories written in America in the Gilded Age. To avoid creating a similar history in Madison County, Manuel and Stacy suggested to Diber that they create a freely accessible website instead of a single publication, one that relied on a more inclusive community engagement. With the support of the Irish Digital Humanities Center, Hanson, Manuel, Stacy, several graduate and undergraduate research assistants, and I created Madison Historical, the online encyclopedia and digital archive for Madison County, Illinois, over the past four years. Though the project has recreated a degree of community boosterism and unequal power dynamics, it has also managed to invite participation from communities previously left out of written county histories, primarily through oral histories. My role as the project's web developer and digital archive designer has led me to contemplate how a local community interacts with their history differently when it is online. Our project has partnered with numerous local museums throughout Madison County to feature their artifact collections in the project's digital archive and use local sources to write encyclopedia articles. Because the project is built upon pre-existing narratives, we often recreate the lasting traditions of celebratory history. Due to limited resources, local museums rely upon unpaid volunteer work and participation of typically white affluent community members who tend to focus on histories more familiar to them. In addition, many rural and underserved communities in Madison County lack a municipal museum. Broadly, our project has struggled to write articles about or digitize artifacts related to, for example, LGBTQ plus history or the experiences of working class immigrants. We have had the most success highlighting previously overlooked narratives through oral histories conducted by project team members. By working with community organizations and meeting people at public events, we've interviewed nearly 60 individuals of various backgrounds who have spoken to many topics often ignored in traditional local histories. One man described how a local restaurant put glass in his chili after they were forced to serve African Americans. Another told how his mother survived the Armenian genocide and her immigration to Madison County. One woman talked about how her father maintained his Italian heritage after immigrating to Madison County to work as a coal miner. Not only do oral histories provide insight into often over ignored narratives, they are more naturally aligned with how most members of the community experience local history through personal conversation about the way things were. Community members are usually more interested in talking about their life for an hour than researching and writing an encyclopedia article. By participating in an oral history, Interview subjects become the creators of history, not just consumers. Though it is tempting to haphazardly collect oral histories to expose injustice, it is important to recognize the individuals and communities behind the interviews and to guard against possible harm that can come from the interview process. Academic interviewers should be aware of the inherent power differences between themselves and interviewees from a vulnerable community, as interviews can touch upon upsetting topics. Interviewees may be uncomfortable having their interview online and open to public scrutiny, as a result, we make sure to be transparent about the purpose of the interview, where it will be available online, and what the final interview product will look like. We also recognize that consent is a continuous process, especially in digital environments. We therefore give the interviewer an opportunity to review the interview's audio and transcript before we post them, and they have the right to request their interview be taken offline at any time and for any reason. However, oral histories alone do not create a fully inclusive history. 
While online oral histories may make certain overlooked topics more present, they do not generate intergroup dialogue on their own. The inherent structure of Madison Historical's digital archive means that each oral history, like each document and photograph, is treated as a discrete entity without relation to each other. Due to this limitation, broader intersectional narratives about immigration, social class, and racism in the county remain elusive. It has become increasingly clear that our project cannot reveal these narratives solely through online interaction. Our most successful community outreach has been visits to area classrooms, where the project team in introduces students to the website. The students then digitize family artifacts or record an oral history to be included in the archive. In the future, we hope to plan public events based on our success with these class visits, particularly focused on communities currently underrepresented on the site. In addition to scanning community artifacts, we will also play some of the oral histories with the interviewee's permission and encourage attendees to share their thoughts afterwards. From that dialogue and further articles, artifacts, and oral histories, we hope to reveal a more inclusive history that can be shared in person and online. Thank you.